Uh, okay. Um, some time ago, I read the story of Rebecca Taylor, written in blog form by her mother. And uh, in her short 13 years, Rebecca uh, has suffered from several pancreatitis, uh, from severe pancreatitis, and has had more than 55 surgeries and spent about 1,000 days in hospital. Her mother, Kristen, often talks about blood cells and stents in her blog. And then later on of hemorrhagic stroke. So here's what she says in one of her blogs. It consumed my thoughts and consumed me emotionally. But I want to describe what happened to me last Sunday. Last Sunday, I heard a sermon on anxiety from Philippians chapter four, verses six to eight. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So I presented my request to God, as I had done many times before. But this time, I needed more from God, and I was challenged to talk to him. So I used Philippians 4 as a guide, and I prayed. I want to describe what I did. Finally, brothers, whatever is true. Well, I ask myself, well, what is true in my life at this particular moment? The answer, the blessing of all my family and friends being together. Right. Whatever is noble. Right. The blessing of enjoying each other's presence outside a hospital. Whatever is right. The blessing of experiencing my two sons' daily lives. Whatever is pure. The blessing of all three children laughing and playing with each other. Whatever is lovely. The blessing of watching Rebecca sleep peacefully in her bed at night. Whatever is admirable. The blessing of an honorable team working, working tirelessly to care for Rebecca. If anything is excellent, well, the blessing of watching a miracle unfold or praiseworthy, the blessing of worshiping a God who is worthy to be praised. And then Paul says, think about such things. Think about such things. I stopped the dreaded phrase hemorrhagic stroke from sucking the joy out of my life. Its power to provoke anxiety was now rendered important. And when I dwelt on the beautiful blessings in my life happening at this very moment, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, did guard my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. A truly unexpected miracle. Thank you, Lord. If you listened very carefully, did you notice what Kristen did, the mother of Rebecca? She stopped the dreaded phrase, hemorrhagic uh, stroke, from destroying her joy. She took time to think about what she was thinking about. The stroke, this stroke, this technical term, uh, was a phrase hanging over her like a cyclonic storm. Rather than think she had to stay with that thought in her life, she took that and walked it to the exit door and told it to leave. You know, what's important here? What is important is you select your thoughts. You select your thoughts. You didn't select your birthplace. You didn't select your birth date. You didn't select your parents or siblings. Siblings, You don't determine the weather. No, there are many things in life over which you and I have no say whatever. But in the greatest and most important activity in your life, you have absolute dominion. You get to choose what you think. 
like um, the commentator said, you are the air traffic controller of your mental airport. You determine which thoughts get to land and which thoughts need to leave. You know, thoughts have consequences. Thoughts actually run your life. Do you want to be happy tomorrow? Well, then you need to sow seeds of happiness today. Do you want to be cranky and irritable and depressed tomorrow? Then just crawl into the pit of anxiety and guilt today. We become what we believe. That was actually the teaching of Jesus. You remember the brief incident in Matthew's gospel chapter nine, uh, there, there were a couple of blind men who came to Jesus and asked him for healing. You remember what he said? Do you really believe I can do this? And they replied, why? Yes, of course, master. And so Jesus reaches out, touches their eyes, and he says, become what you believe. Become what you believe. Faith, the Bible says. Healing begins with healthy thinking. You know, your challenge is not your challenge. Your challenge is the way you think about your challenge. Your, ch your problem is not your problem. It is, you know, the problem is the way you look at the problem. That's the problem. There are many circumstances in life that we simply cannot change. What we can change is the way we think about our challenges and our problems. We are the sum total of our thoughts. Now, Satan knows this very well. In fact, next to God, I think he knows it the best. For that reason, the devil is always messing with our minds. Yes, he has one aim, and that is to pollute your thoughts. And he traffics in lies. He traffics in uh, deceit. And, you know, um, he, um, he traffics in this way. He fills the air with aeroplanes yeah, that carry nothing but anxiety and fear. And he's doing his best to convince you to let those planes land in your mind and load their cargo onto your thought process. He promotes fraud. He promotes false wisdom. The Bible describes it as earthly, unspiritual, even demonic wisdom. Satan has never, ever spoken a word of truth. Never. He lied to Eve in the beginning. He lied to King David later on. He lied to Judas. Judas. He, he lies to everybody. He lies to you and me even now. And just as God cannot tell a lie, Satan cannot tell anything except a lie. He is a living lie. He is the master of lies. But he is not the master of your mind. You are. And God will help you direct your thoughts. And right on top of God's priority is this. He wants you to think and act like Jesus. He wants to transform you into a new person, to be just like Jesus. And by changing the way you think, that's the way he does it. He's going to get inside your mind. He's going to help you think healthy thoughts. And one of the ways God helps us to do this is by equipping us uh, and uh, helping us understand the strategies of Satan. Yes, we know exactly what Satan is up to. Every one of his thoughts fits into one of three categories. What are these three categories? Godless, negative, amplified. Godless, negative, amplified. So anytime you find yourself thinking godless thoughts, you know where they come from. What's a godless thought? Well, God does not care for me. God does not exist. Even if he does exist, he can't help me. Anytime you find yourself, you know, wading into a difficulty without consulting God, then the devil is doing to you what he did to Eve. He convinced Eve to make a decision about the forbidden fruit without consulting her creator God. You know, this was his first and this is his oldest trick. He wants you and me to face problems without God. You know, often we are full of complaints against God. 
we are full of complaints against God, but we don't want to actually listen to him. We only want to complain against him. Okay. With godless. Also, Satan's thoughts are always negative. He has never encouraged anyone anytime. Satan's goal with Judas was to leave Ju lead Judas to a place that is so dark that Judas finally took his own life. And the same is happening to many, many, many people today. Jesus says Satan comes with the sole intention of stealing, killing, destroying. He wants to lead you and me to a dark place. And then he wants to convince us that no light will ever enter into that dark place. Maybe you are in this dark place even now. You think no windows will ever open. No light will ever come. That is a lie that comes straight from the pit of hell. Hell. Because the Bible assures us that no life is irrede irredeemable. No person is unlovable. No problem has absolutely no solution. But Satan wants us to stay in this dark place. And once he has us there, do you know what he does? He turns up the volume in the thoughts he distributes to us. They're not only godless, not only negative, they are amplified, overstated, exaggerated, inflated. I'll never get out of this. We'll never get out of debt. I'll never get a job. I'll never get married. I will never have friends. Overstatements. And what kind of a person would those thoughts create? Have you thought for a moment? If you are a person who has these kind of thoughts, what kind of person do you become? You become an anxious, troubled, confused person. You know? Um, they're godless, negative, exaggerated, amplified thoughts. You know, we are surrounded by a swarm of gnats everywhere we turn. But here's something important. Just because you have a thought, you don't have to think it. Did you hear that? Just because you have a thought, you don't have to think it. You don't have to let it in. Just because it is circling overhead, you don't have to give it permission to land. You can do what the Apostle Paul Peter says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith. Don't let him get into your head. Keep Satan's thoughts out and bring God's thoughts in. The thoughts of God are easy to identify. Just as Satan's thoughts are godless, the thoughts of God are God-centered. The godly thought quickly calls God into the situation, saying, God, I'm anxious. Will you help me? You talk to God before you talk to anyone else. You go quickly to God. Thoughts from God are always inspirational. God quickly brings hope. He is the God of hope. He's the God of light. And he wants to bring encouragement into your world. And he does so by using scripture. He equips you with scripture. You know, that will give you strength with which to stare down the thoughts of the devil. So when these fearful, anxious thoughts come, you turn quickly to Bible passages. Jesus said, if anyone is weary, let him come to me and he will find rest. And so you pray. So, Lord, here I am. You taught me to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Will you please be my shepherd right now? Will you walk me? through the difficult period in my life that I'm facing even today. Your word says that you can take what is evil and you can redeem it. You can turn it into something good. So the very moment Satan buzzes around you with all these evil godless thoughts, you are waving these thoughts away by using the truth of the scriptures. And God brings inspiration, hope and truth. The first thing Paul says is to meditate on these things. Whatever is true, Satan wants you to go down a path called possible assumptions. You know, this is going to happen. That is going to happen. The worst possible scenarios come to mind. And that's where Satan wants you to go. That is his intention. Paul describes the better way offered by God. You know what he says? Capture every thought and make it give up and obey Christ. Capture every thought and make it give up and obey Christ. And that's what Kirsten did. 
the dreaded technical name for the disease that Rebecca had, you know, it keeps it kept on ringing in her mind. And then she says, I'm going to capture that thought and make it surrender to the authority of Christ. So when the anxious thoughts come into your world, what do you do? You slap handcuffs on them. And the one who has the power and the authority to say, get thee behind me, Satan. He will take that thought and show it the door. And when Jesus removes an anxious thought, he always replaces it with a godly one. He will always bring a different thought process. And instead of overreacting, you know, to a, maybe a phone call or a WhatsApp message or a letter, you will respond with God-centered thinking. Before you panic or call out to others, you'll call out to God. Lord, I feel some fear coming, some anxiety coming. But Lord, I believe you're mightier than this. And then you turn quickly to God's Holy Spirit. Who is God's Holy Spirit? He is the one assigned the task of guarding your heart and mind through Christ Jesus and to give you peace that passes human understanding. He will bring to your mind verses, some of which you may have memorized, some of which you may have heard preachers say, some of which you may have seen on a wall in someone's house. And these verses will come to your mind. The Holy Spirit will bring them to you and you will stand on these promises. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, make your requests known to God. Okay, God, I'm going, I'm going to be anxious for nothing. Here's my prayer. Here's my petition. Would you please grant me that peace that passes all understanding? And you then begin to receive this inspiration. Something, sometimes, of course, it is not easy, but it's always possible. Anxiety comes with life but it does not have to run your life. Let me finish. Kirsten and her family found this level of peace. Continuing to read her blogs, blogs I discovered that in good time, Rebecca received a tan transplant. She received a transplant. When she was at her lowest ebb, she got a transplant. And then things began to look up. She, well, she um, was full of life. She became vibrant. She started gaining weight. Her liver was steady. And on her 13th birthday, the entire hospital, all of Rebecca's family and friends gathered together to rejoice with Rebecca uh, on her 13th birthday. And the doctor, the doctor team could not imagine that with such complications, she would recover so dramatically. She became their walking miracle. And Kirsten later on uh, made this entry in her blog. And with this, I finished. Finish. I watched these interactions with a silent sense of awe. It is easy to praise God during seasons of wellness, but it was during my greatest distress when I felt the Lord's presence poured upon me. And it was in those heartbreaking moments I learned to trust and lean on this God who provided unimaginable strength during unimaginable pain. Paul calls this a peace that passes understanding. And I pray that God would grant us all this new way of thinking that we would not be victims of our thoughts, that we would take our thoughts captive before they take us captive. Let our thoughts be God-centered, bringing inspiration from scripture. And may our thoughts be factual, built on truth. And may we receive this gift of peace that passes human understanding. God bless us all. Thank you so much, Uncle, for that really rich message. Truly, when we change our thoughts, we will change our world. And uh, I think it's been a really, really rich service today. Even though we may be running late, still, I think each one of us has been really blessed. And